In this video, we're going to start down the path of creating 3D models by learning how to create the simple primitives that you see in front of us. When I want to create primitives, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to my command panel. I'm going to click on the Create tab. Then I'm going to come down to Geometry. And you'll see within that we've got our standard primitives. We've got lots of other different primitives here that we're going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, let's go back to standard. There we go. And the first one I'm going to look at is this box here. So I'll click on box and you'll see that it uh, highlights and there's a few few little bits that I can type in here. But really the best way to use 3D Studio Max isn't to type things in and to try and be too precise about it to begin with. The best way to use it is just to click and drag in the viewport. So you can see here I'm in the perspective view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click. I'm going to keep my finger on that left click. I'm going to drag out the width or the base shape and you can see here I can change the width or the length of the object depending on how I want it to uh, roughly be. I'll let go, I'll push the mouse away from me and then I'll left click again when I want to finish with my height. Now do bear in mind this is a sticky tool so what you might find is that you still haven't clicked out of box so if I left click again I start to create another box and another box and another box and another box and that can be a little bit awkward. One thing you should also be aware of if I flick on this auto grid option what you'll see is at the moment my Z is pointing up because it's lining itself to the world. Yeah, You see the little blue icon there, the blue arrow is pointing up. What happens if I happen to uh, move the cursor over this box? You can see that it the Z starts to sort of push away from the surface that the cursor is touching. So I could create a new box on top of that one, or I could create another box on the side of this one, and I can add some kind of random detail in here as and how I want. So this can be a really, really useful function for just sort of adding extra little bits of detail into your models without actually having built anything at all. So that's how we create boxes. How do, we, how do we create the sphere? Well, I'll click on sphere over here. And all I'm going to do with that, I'll turn off my auto grid quickly, is I'm going to left click and drag. Now this appears that I've only got half a sphere there. In actual fact, if I pick that up and move that, you'll see it's a whole one. It's just it was intersected by this ground plane. So we'll do that again just to prove it. There we go. Sphere, left click and drag it out. And you can see we've got the bounding box here showing me the extents of the object and if I rotate around it you can see it's completely spherical. The cylinder is the next object that we've got along here and again that's very similar to the box in that I left click, I drag out to create the base diameter, I let go and then I push up away from me and that then creates the height of the object. Lastly, we've got this plane that I now have selected here. And to create a plane, I'll just click on plane. And it's a little bit like creating a box. You just left click and you drag out. And there you go. There's your flat plane. And at any point, we can come in and we can go to our modify tab and select one of these objects. And we've got our modify options in here that we can change as well. So you'll notice from this list of standard primitives, there's a few extra ones in here. Sometimes you quite often see me, see me use a teapot. And a teapot's very much like creating a sphere. So you just left click with that, and there's your teapot. I would advise you to play around with a few of the others. Um, try some of the extended primitives as well. There's some uh, sort of slightly less commonly used objects in there. But pretty much that's how you go around creating parametric primitives inside of 3D Studio Max.